Howdy guys, welcome back to Hide and Seek. In this video, we're going to be doing the fifth floor, which is the final floor in the game, so this is going to be the finale video. And man, I just did a practice run, because this floor is pretty tough, and I wanted to practice, and I don't even know what's going on in the storyline anymore. It's, there's so much stuff, and it's... I'll give my theory at the end, but I I don't know anymore. They left a lot of plot holes open, and it's it's kind of up to the player to figure out what happened, or at least guess what happened. So I don't know, it's it's an interesting game. And you know what, too? I wanted to say this, too. At the very first video I made for this series, I said, this game's not as good as Deep Sea Girl. I take that back. They're both very good games. And I think I was just a little bit bitter over the fact that you have a finite number of lives. So I, I was just a little bit bitter about that fact. But they're both really good games. I, I think they're both great. And um, even after playing through this again, it's it's definitely up there with Deep Sea Girl. I heard a voice from somewhere. So there's a couple th different things to do at this point in the level. You don't have to go in any particular order. But this level is divided up into all the seasons. So you have summer, fall, winter, and spring. And I know I've kind of complained about the level design in previous levels, especially floor number two. I, I didn't like that floor. That was my least favorite floor in the game. Just because some of the rooms seemed out of place in a mansion that's supposed to be creepy. But I like this level. It's it's not bad. I really like what they did with it. It's it's a good design. And it's it kind of brings everything together, in my opinion. So search all over the room, and that's going to give you the frozen seed. Again, you don't have to do this in any particular order, but you do have to plant this seed for whatever reason. It doesn't do anything. It just grows a little tiny seed, but you just have to do that, or else the bridge won't pop out. And then the next thing you want to do is grab these scissors, take it, and then come over to the spring room, and there's going to be a big tree. Just use the scissors on this tree right here. Now, look at this dialogue. This has to be the weirdest dialogue in the game. Use the scissors. After cutting off the twigs of the tree, the tree cracks a smile. What the hell is that supposed to mean? It likes it? This is so weird. This game, I don't know if it's a translation issue or if they were just trying to be funny, but it's just weird. I don't know. So the next thing you need to do is you have a twig right now, and I got a little bit stuck here. But if you take a look at this top right tree, there's actually an apple there. I never noticed that my first playthrough, and I was like, God dang, I was stuck here for a while. And uh, before I poke it, if you talk to it, it says, Being seriously ill, fruits are hanging on the tree. If you don't mind, could you bury me in the cold land? So that's kind of a hint on what to do, but just take the twig, poke it. It's going to bump down, and you get the fruit. So the next thing you want to do is take that fruit over to the crack where we first got the seed. Just stuff it in there, <laughs> and for whatever reason, it's going to make the bridge connect. I don't know how that works. Again, some of the puzzles in this game make no sense whatsoever, but that's just what you have to do. So do that, and now we have access to the center room, and we have access to all the season rooms from this, along with four other rooms. So just to warn you, there's going to be a lot of chase scenes. Let me save. I'll just use file one just to be safe, and there's going to be a lot of chase scenes on this level. I think five altogether. But they're not too bad, and they're all pretty easy, except for the last one. Oh my god, the last one is so difficult. I don't know why they made it. I guess probably because it's the last one, but it's just really hard. I'll probably be dying at least once, just to warn you. So push the statue down, pretty easy puzzle. And then just watch where you're sliding throughout this puzzle. You could slide into the, uh, the spikes, and that's obviously going to kill you. So just grab this ring right here, and then leave the room. And then that's going to start chasing of the eyeless girl. But she's pretty slow, and she gives you plenty of space, so it's nothing really too much to worry about. And then what you have to do for each character that chases you, you have to go to a specific room. And then for this one, you have to go to the fall room. And that's going to trigger a little cutscene for each of the characters, excuse me. So come in here, and it's going to say, How long will you follow me? Oh, wow, Dorothy's actually crying. I never noticed that. Look at her. Oh man, that's actually kind of sad. I never knew she had that sprite. And then after that, yeah, she's gonna... She's gonna disappear. And then it's gonna come to this cutscene. The rose is so beautiful, thank you. It's a relief that you like it. Is there anything you want? For now, this is enough. So that's a little bit of a cutscene. And then just pay attention if you're interested in the storyline, because all of this is gonna tie together. And then once you finish one of the rooms, it turns black and white. So once one of the rooms turns black and white, you don't have to go back in there. It's, it's pretty much done for. So the next thing to do is, I think you go to the top left room, and that's going to bring you... Yeah, the top left room. And this one, what you have to do is read the book. It says, in order to check the status of the grain, you must slowly cut the woven bag with a knife. If there are bugs in the grain, take caution as you may need to throw them away. 
is a cutter knife. Take it and then cut over, cut these bags right over here. And then uh, there's the rabbit doll. Yeah, we definitely didn't miss him. And then what you want to do for this one, I think you go to the fall or the the spring room. Is it the spring room? It, it might not be. I might have to, to run around. Oh, no, it is the spring room. Okay. So right here, he gets stabbed by one of the plants, <laughs> which was very pleasing to watch, by the way. And then here's another cutscene. So take note of this right here. Dorothy and the guy are actually playing hide and seek. And it said, where did she go? Or where did she hide? I think this is just a translation issue. I don't know why they called him or her. I think there's actually one of the part in the game where they refer to that boy as a girl. I don't know why they do that. But anyways, it's it's definitely a boy. I guess it doesn't really matter. It could be a girl. It doesn't affect the storyline, but... With that being said, just take note they're playing hide-and-seek right here, and it's... You know, there's nothing wrong with it. They're just playing as friends. I found you. Good job. Okay, I will give you the rabbit doll as promised. So right there, Dorothy gets the rabbit. She's crying there too. Why is she? I never noticed that. Anyway, so the next thing to do is come back up here, and then there's two more rooms to go, but this next room I'm going to do, it can be a little bit tricky, so I'm just going to save just in case because the lights do go out. And it's kind of hard to navigate from the skull chasing you. If you remember back to the first floor, it's that skull that's chasing you around. So come in here, and I think what you have to do is just talk to this cabinet. Take it, and it's going to give you a plastic bag. So, yeah, the lights go out, and then just, just keep an eye out. You don't know which way it's coming. All right. All right, and then just get, get out of there. <laughs> And then what you want to do is, uh, again, it doesn't matter which way you go. You can loop around, but you have to go to the summer room. So I'm just kind of taking the long way, but come in here. And if you actually talk to this tree before you come in here into this cutscene, it says the tree's about to fall over. So, yeah, the, the tree falls on him and it crushes him. Lose. And then right here, Dorothy sees one of the maids has died. And I think that's one of the first ones she sees. Wow, I didn't even notice that sprite either. I thought she only had one sprite in the game. I never knew about all these. Um, so that's a flashback of one of the maids dying. And then there's one more room to go. Which is the ice room. And let me think here. What do I have to do for the last one? Oh, the last one's the plant one. This one's pretty easy. It's not too tough. I'm not even going to bother saving. So the last one, just go to the bottom right room and keep note of all this stuff too. You can't really walk through this, so don't get stuck right here or else you're going <laughs> to obviously die. So come in here and there's um, a kind of a weird puzzle, but talk to this tree and it says, what to do? You're always too busy to work in the spring. So use the plastic bag, and then it's going to say, by any chance, can you help me carry the pollen? So accept the request, and then just look what it says right here. It says, well, starting from the upper right-hand side, turn clockwise, then come back. So we start with pollen A, and then just go in order, like it said, top right, and then go clockwise. So it's a pretty easy puzzle. It just goes in order, too. So it's going to give you pollen B. Just do the same thing. Like I said, go in order. And I don't know what triggers the, the guy chasing you. I think it's once you do Paul and D, it's going to start chasing after you. So just be ready. Wait a second. I don't think I triggered it. Nope. I think i got to talk to the tree one more time. You should think about how much you received from me. Oh, my God. <laughs> I didn't see that coming. Jeez. I thought I had to do something else. But, yeah, just talk to the tree then. And then make your way up to the frozen room, and yeah, it's going to freeze after that. So we're done with the puzzles then, except for the last one. But everything else is pretty easy, except for, like I said, that last chase scene. It is so tough. But come back in here and look at this. This cutscene kind of confused me. And it kind of threw my theory off. But look, it says, Dorothy, where are you? And she kind of crouches down and says, no more. And then the skull pops up in the background. And then at this point, she's saying, Mom, Dad, everyone. So everyone else is dead at this point, I'm guessing. 
I'm so sorry. It's my fault. And then right here too, this, this kind of plays into the theory. I won't talk about it too much yet, but she says it's her fault. So whatever happened to them, Dorothy is kind of taking blame for it. She thinks it's her fault when it, it probably obviously wasn't her fault. So with that being done, I heard some sounds from the fountain. So let me save really quick. Again, I'm going to use file one. Let's go back to the fountain. So right in here, it's gray over here too. And then look, there's a little pathway open. So just take this down. It's going to bring you into this room. This room is a little bit tricky. I did not know what to do. It's kind of just a guessing game. But what you could do is right now the door's locked and you can highlight all these items or just check them out. So just do the important ones. And I think one of them is the rabbit doll. I don't even remember now. But just do the things that were, that were big in the game. So the rabbit doll, the rose, and the mirror. Those are like the three big things out of all of these items. If you check out all the other items, I mean, it's, it's a clock. A clock does kind of seem like it'd be an important item, but it's not. And then something like this, gold, that's obviously not an important item in the game. So just highlight those three. Again, it could be a little bit tricky figuring that out. But after that's done, ooh, did I do it right? I did do it right. So talk to that and the door opens. And then look at this room. This is probably like the most normal looking room in the game. Well, I guess the first couple were pretty normal looking, but definitely save and... File one, let me just talk to, I guess I don't have to talk to this stuff, but. Okay, so yeah, just talk to the diary and it says, Dorothy's diary, reading. Today is the weirdest day. It was the first time she and I lost the game. Right here too. She calls the boy a she. I don't know why, but two maids died in the house. She told me that it was because of the results of this game. I don't really know why you're sad, Dorothy. Don't regret your actions if you acted from greed. Man is mortal in the end. You want to raise two maids from the dead? Let's make a bet. So right here, Dorothy makes a bet with the boy to bring everybody back to life. When the bet, who knows? As always, today's the last day of the bet. Is it possible to win them back? There's something in the diary. So check this out. Dorothy's going to fall through the floor. Also, that's the same exact scream in Deep Sea Girl. <laughs> uh, anyways, yeah, save here if you want to. I, I just saved, so I'm not going to bother. And then let me talk about this really quick. So there's three different endings. I had to look online to figure it out, and I looked online for a few other things, which I'll talk about in the video description. I'll put a link to it. It's a really good site. It helped me out a lot. I would not have ever figured out how to get the best ending. Absolutely no way. I know for a fact I would have played this game for over 10 years and still never figured it out. They made it way too hard. I, if you figure that out by yourself, you are a genius. I have, I, it, just, it would have never occurred to me. But this door right here, this is for the two different endings, which if you get the best ending, you get to see all three endings put together. That's just how it works. So I'm not going to bother showing the first and the second ending because the third ending I'm showing is going to include all three endings. It'll make more sense once you watch it. So just ignore that door. We're not going to use it. And then come right up here. There's going to be a couple more uh, cutscenes. Excuse me. Where I have a headache. This time for sure. What was that? Come up here. There's one more cutscene. And then this too is a little bit confusing. Look, it says no, no way. And then listen to this too. I mean, it almost sounds like right there Dorothy would be killed just from that noise and the, the screen shaking, but I don't really know what that's supposed to be representing. But anyways, yeah, just come right over here. And then come in this room right here. So there's a couple things to do in this room. If you want the second best ending, you got to talk to this guy right here. And that's going to give you the hands of the claw, but we're not going to need those anyways for the ending we're getting. Listen to this music too. It's it's really good actually. I love this music. It's just it's great. It's perfect for the scene, but there's two more things to do. Talk to this picture right here. There's gonna be one more cutscene.
It's here, right? You arrived faster than I expected. Last mission is getting out of this place. Don't worry, I will let you continue to win. So, right here too, keep note that he says this. I will let you continue to win. If I win this game, you must return everything. So this is obviously his room. And if you read the items and just look from this room, he's either the devil or he's an associate of the devil. So he's going to be the cause of all the things going on in this game. But he still kind of wants Dorothy to win. Either because he likes her company, likes her as a person, or because he's just bored. He just wants to play a game. Because as the saying goes, the idle mind is the devil's workshop. So right here too, there's there's a, there's a clock to save, which I'm definitely going to be saving right here because this last chase scene is ridiculous. Uh, file one, and then use the spring on this clock right here. No, not this one. Use the spring on this clock. You came this far. Yes. Your memories must have returned. Why? This is really the last, right? Yes, if only you can get out. All right. Since you came this far, you should try a little harder. I will. All right, I wish you luck. All right, so with that, we get the key, so. <laughs> right here. Let me just talk about this a little bit before we get started, so. There is gonna be a terrifying monster chasing you, just awful. And what you actually have to do is you have to loop around and come back in this room right up here. So you have to, oh, no, 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 no. Oh, oh. Okay, so watch what I do right here. I'm gonna try to do it right now. So loop back, come right up here. Go, 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 go. Oh, first try, that's what I'm talking about. Yes, yeah. so what you have to do is you have to go to the very end of the wall without even being able to see, go to the very last tile. So let's say this is the last tile in the dark. Look at it, walk back once, and then use the key right there, one block away from the very end. How the hell are you supposed to figure that out? And you have absolutely no time to do that. He is right behind you. So I don't know why they made it so difficult. Again, I had to look online for that. There's no way I would have ever figured that out. Now, there is one thing you could do to make that a little bit easier on you if you're having trouble. And that's just to buy speed. You can actually make Dorothy faster, but you got to spend money. So that's entirely up to you. No. So that's it. That's what you have to do to get the best ending. So let's just proceed. Now I do have the clock ends in my inventory, but again, you don't need those for the best ending. You just have to figure out to do that in that secret little room over there. And then I can mention too, if you ran to that other door I mentioned when we first got to that sewer level, you would use the clock hands on this clock and I think this room would be all beat up. But if you did the best ending, just get outside. Yeah, and you're going to be done. <laughs> so we finished the game. And then let's just get through these cutscenes. Again, this is going to be the end. So spoiler alert, you might want to finish the game for yourself first. This voice is... Dorothy. What happened? Seems like you had a nightmare. Yes, it was very scary. I lost mom and dad in my dream, but I'm okay now. Don't worry, Dorothy. I am here with you. Okay, mom. And then look, the maids are alive too. Dinner is ready. Well, let's go eat something delicious. Okay, mom. So right here, if you got the worst ending, then it would cut right here, and that would be the end of the game. But if you got the second best ending, then it would loop to this cutscene right here, neighbor A. Have you heard the news? What news? Our neighbor. There was a fire. There was a house fire one year ago, right? Yes, of course. These days in that house, there are stories of a small girl's laughter that can be heard. Really? Yes, that's right. I heard that too. I don't remember all the story, but we speculated some unknown reasons that led to the death of the family. Right. That happened, right? And at the time, a 12-year-old girl came out out in the closet, but our corpse was not just untouched, but even clean. So we are guessing the girl's spirit of the death is still here. No way, that's ridiculous. 
It's the truth. So right there was the second cutscene. You know what? Let me get to this first. Hey, long time no see. You look the same as always, Sue. So I'm just going to call the boy Sue from now on. Just to not call him the boy anymore. Again, I don't know if that's a translation issue, but we're just going to call him Sue. There are no reasons to change. What is this? Some kind of souvenir? Oh, you. It was pretty fun this time. Well, maybe it is the same ordinary story. I don't want to hear about your story. That's too bad. All right, so that was it for the game then. That was the ending, and I know you're probably thinking to yourself, what kind of ending was that? Who the hell is Priscilla? She had nothing to do with the storyline, but she's going to be coming in the next game, Hide and Seek 2, which I'm going to be doing that again, like I said. So real quick before I get my theory, I just want to say thank you for watching, and these two games, Hide and Seek and Deep Sea Girl, they've been the most fun hands down to record, so... This isn't necessarily why I made the channel, but it's kind of what it's turning into, and I'm definitely going to be doing more games like this, just because they're a lot of fun. So Hide and Seek 2 is definitely coming out, and I've got a couple other games in mind that are similar to this style of gameplay, or genre, that is. So as for the strategy, what I think happened in this game is there's a lot of stuff, a lot of dialogue that I didn't go through. Again, I just used these videos as a walkthrough. So I didn't look at everything that gave bits and pieces of the storyline. But you can find those yourself. Just play through the game and talk to everything. All the diaries, all the everything you can, all the pictures. So what I think is going on is Dorothy was living with her family. And some way or another, she meets a friend and he's allowed to come into the mansion. Now, her family is a little bit protective. I think that that diary that we found on floor three was kind of a metaphor of her life and how she's kind of trapped inside the mansion. But for whatever reason, this boy is allowed inside to play with her. Now, this boy is in fact the devil or an associate of the devil. And he's just out. The more I thought about it, he's really just bored and he's out to play a game. So he starts killing people left and right, the servants. And he does convince Dorothy that it was her fault from losing one of the hide-and-seek games, I think. So Dorothy feels guilty and he says to her, You know what? Let's play one last game. If you win, I'll reverse this. Or I'll not send them to hell. One way or another, I think everybody's still dead. I don't know if Dorothy's still dead. Now, if you saw that second-to-last cutscene, it said that they found her body untouched and unscathed, and it was clean in the drawer. Not the drawer, but in the wardrobe. So I think what happened is maybe while they were playing the game, everybody else is dead, and they just kind of preserved her body while she could go to hell or wherever the hell she went to play this game. So I don't know, maybe after the game was over, she went back to her body, so Dorothy might still be alive. I'm not just saying that because I'm an optimist, which I am an optimist, but I don't know, it just seems weird the fact that they would point out that her body was unscathed and still clean while everybody else was burnt. So I don't know, It's it's uh, there's a lot of stuff going on, but that's what I think happened, and he was kind of rooting for Dorothy to win, again... The idle mind is the devil workshop. I think that was a big theme in this game. And he was really just bored and out to play a game. And who knows, he might have even enjoyed it enough where he actually liked Dorothy as a friend. Because he was trying to help her out and he did enjoy the pocket watch that she gave him. So I don't know, let me know your theory. I, I am interested. Now, I did read two theories on that website I was looking at for hints, especially for that final scene. And a lot of people were kind of turning into a love story, which is fine. It's more of a girl thing, actually, but whatever. Whatever floats your boat, right? But yeah, give me your theory if you want to. Leave it in the comments below, or if you have any questions, you know, you can ask as well. Now, I'm sure more of the storyline is going to unfold with Hide and Seek 2, so uh, I'll hold off on saying anything else, and then I'll probably give more of an insight after I finish that game. So for Hide and Seek 2, it's a lot different. I've already beat the first floor, and there is new mechanics... There's a whole bunch of stuff, but I, I kind of like it. And in fact, it's the exact same as the mansion in Hide and Seek 1. So it's going to be a different player. And you're going through the mansion, and it's a, it's a blast. It's definitely different, though. So I'm probably going to be taking a day off. Maybe not. I don't know. But I'll, I'll definitely be posting Hide and Seek 2 shortly. And if you guys have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. And thank you for watching.